Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Opposing Points podcast. My guest today is Gabrielle Clark, founder of AffirmingReality.com. Both of her children were affected by indoctrination in schools, one of which was affected by the gender woke indoctrination cult. What Gabrielle has learned, she is now offering in coaching services and passing on to other parents, offering one-on-one resources and tools to pull their children out of the gender cult. If you enjoy this conversation, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching. Hey, Gabs, welcome to the show. Good to have you. Thank you so very much for having me. Um, so I wanted to start off understanding before we get into the the work that you do, um, what your background is and kind of how you've gotten to where you are right now. Well, I was just a mom, like everyone, like all the other people um, fighting in the anti-woke space. Um, my son was um, asked to provide his a list of his identities and attach signifiers to those identities of privileged and oppressed. And um, he refused. The school threatened to um, fail him and that would have prevented him from graduating from high school. So I decided, we decided as a family to file a lawsuit. So we filed the first federal lawsuit against woke indoctrination in America. And while I was fighting CRT on behalf of my son, my daughter was being socially transitioned through the SEL program. And I had to stop my activism for my son to pull my daughter out of that cult. And I created a program called Affirming Reality. And it's now being used all over the world with some degree of success. That sounds like a lot at the same time, um, <laughs> more than more than a lot of people go through. A lot of people are just dealing with the one. Um, so um, I guess, how, how did how did that happen? Like, um, how how old was your daughter when when this happened? Like, what's what's the background? She was in the seventh grade when I started to notice some real changes in her behavior. Mm -hmm. Um she she had been a sweet girl. She had been um, very loving. You know, she would hug you with her whole heart and her whole, all her arms and everything, just, um, you know, squeeze and shut her eyes really tight. She just used to be such a, a sweet and loving girl. Mm -hmm. And um, she was wearing tutus and, and um, poodle skirts. Right. Um, before and then something happened and the makeup started becoming satanic looking and I'm an atheist so I don't say that easily like it just it, it wasn't goth really it was more demonic like and um and her behavior started to change drastically she started lying a lot and and there were a lot of tantrums and um, and then, you know, ultimately there was self-harm involved, scratching and biting, excessive, um, excessive use of the internet, TikToks and, and social media, all kinds of social media. And so I, I started to get really concerned. Um, and we went on a vacation, we went on a vacation and while we were on vacation, there was no internet and her friends weren't there and she wasn't at school. And she went, like in two weeks, she went back to the way she had been before. And I didn't understand. So when we returned, she was able to use her devices again and some of the behaviors started back. But when she returned to school, the following school year in the eighth grade, that was when I saw it wasn't just the social media or peer pressure from her friends it was something happening at school so you're, you're at that point um where you're noticing these changes uh was there a point where you kind of 
asked her what was going on and you found out that she identified this way did she come to you like how did you respond and well she was she was very open about everything um at first she was identifying as bi bisexual and um and that actually had happened prior to prior to all of this but i just dismissed it because i knew what was going on in you know the world at the time and that was kind of how how all the kids were behaving and mm -hmm. i didn't think anything of it really um but she started identifying it i identifying as non-binary and you know when you hear that from from a, you know a, a seventh grader you're just you know you roll your eyes and you just keep going you know at that time at that time we hadn't had this huge jump in children identifying as lgbtq mm -hmm. it was just I, I just rolled my eyes and didn't think anything of it excuse me but when the when the behavior started to become dangerous and self and there was self-harm involved and i started seeing um you know a rise in her in her um her social media usage and her, her, the time that she was spending on the internet, that was when I started to get concerned, um, very concerned. Um, there was also um, sexually explicit materials that she was looking at about polyamory and that sort of thing. And I was like, you're a kid, what are you doing? You know? Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, I did do everything I could to try to um, stop that but it would just it just got worse and when she started identifying as trans and she told me you know well I'm not going to get top surgery yet and I'm like you're not going to get top surgery at all mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm, I'm not we're not doing that you know mm -hmm. that was that was the point at which I said okay something something has to be done I have to do something I can't just I can't just ignore this anymore yeah, you 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 brought up um some of the satanic stuff, and I'm I'm also by the way I'm on I'm on I'm on the same page with you as far as atheism, but also recognizing things that appear satanic. I think about like the the Sam Smith performance that I'm sure lots of kids your daughter's age at that point were watching. Um, right. I can't imagine what's also going on in the schools at this point. Um, it's been you know twelve years for me since I've even been in high school. Um. But what do you what are you seeing in the schools now? Um, and this may shock me even. I've seen some of the stuff online with like these books that are in schools, but what do you, what are you seeing on the schools and and on these social media TikTok things <laughs> that um that that you think drive this uh problem? Well, for one thing, the adults are participating. Um, they're participating and not just in the silliness of it. They're participating in the sexual nature of it as well, which I find very disturbing. I mean, we've had um, over the course of the last couple of years, we've had um, teachers and even principals participating in like a uh, strip tease lap dance type stuff. Um, and, uh, you know, of course, the, the drag queen stuff. And let me tell you something. We're not talking about the Liza Minnelli uh, drag show. You know, where she's got this long ball gown on and, you know, it's just basically a clown in a dress. We're not talking about that. We're talking about drag strippers where they have next to nothing on and they're spreading their legs in front of some child. Um, that kind of thing is is completely inappropriate, certainly for school. Um, you know, and there there's there's. There's a costumey something going on at schools. So there have been boys going to school with something similar to, you know, a, a cocktail waitress outfit at a strip club mm -hmm. and paying and they're and they're getting paid like there was one that was getting paid to um, let people lift him, let people pick him up. So he was dressed with his little kitty cat ears and his kitty cat tail with with his uh, French maid outfit on and, mm -hmm. and thigh high thigh high uh um hosiery and pay, having people pay him to pick him up like he's a cat 
the teachers were participating in this as, as well. I mean, that is that is something that I can only surmise comes from um, some sort of porn addiction or exposure to sexual uh, content on 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 the internet. Mm -hmm. That's that is the kind of thing that that teachers and and administrators are allowing in their schools. And you also talked about some uh, like SEL going on. Are, are there any kind of lessons when you look back on it that stand out um, that you can remember? Well, SEL is social emotional learning. And in, in most school, I mean, in most schools in America, there is some sort of counseling program like SEL, transformative SEL, or some sort of club or, or extracurricular extracurricular activity such as uh, the Gay Straight Alliance mm -hmm. or even art clubs that are not art clubs. They're, they're, um, they're supposed to be a safe space for the LGBTQ children to come and be free. Um, but there, there, of course, there was no thing in particular that came home because they don't send that sort of thing home. Um, all of this was all stuff that I found out after the fact, as with most parents. Um, I thought that when my daughter was getting counseling at school, it was because there was a another student, one of her friends, who had um, had attempted self-harm and was put in a in, uh, hospital. And all of the children were affected by it. I did not know that later that was going to be a grooming environment for my daughter mm -hmm. so they were they were talking to her about this kind of so they were socially transitioning her in school it's one of those cases and then you're not aware of it until she kind of comes forward and tells you she's doing this. well she does they they're not allowed to say that right. stuff so this is all conjecture because that's the only that's the only thing that links them of course there's no there's no um there's no smoking gun evidence of any of this this is my belief mm -hmm. because because when, when she was not in that program it it stopped you understand what i'm saying yeah yeah and, yeah and it and it's almost impossible for us to to identify it because it is kept from the parents purposefully yes. if you if you ask your school about your about their gender um, transition plan, um, a lot of the times they won't even give you one until you get a lawyer. That's what I did, and that's how I was able to get the the um, their you know gender transition plans for for um, the teachers to for the teachers to understand what to do in that situation, and it wasn't good. Mm -hmm. um, you know I. As a parent, I want to know every single aspect of my child's um, emotional well-being and safety. And it was clear that that was not the primary goal of this um, program. Yes, and I, I know that, I don't know if it's in all states, but at least in I'm aware of in New York, um, if the child doesn't want their parent to know, um, the teachers have to like use their parents given name for them or gender for them when they write home but in school they'll they'll be socially transitioned right so in lots of states in lots of states they're not allowed to disclose or or um out quote unquote out their children to their own parents mm -hmm. they're they're allowed to keep secrets from their parents the the thing that the one thing that made me flee Las Vegas and move here was when an administrator referred to my daughter as Dan. Mm -hmm. That's not her name. Mm -hmm. And she immediately, oh, sorry. No worries. She immediately corrected herself um, and used, um, used another nickname that my daughter goes by. And I thought that that was, that was for me enough information for to to create a plan to get my daughter out. I, I feel like in many ways where 
we're at an, an inflection point that no one's aware of in our society where, you know, people that are, it's either happened to like you or, or people that pay attention are very aware that this is like a very big problem. And then there are people that it hasn't happened to or aren't that close to the issue that don't see it as a problem and they see it as like, why wouldn't you affirm? Um, right. how, how, do, how do we best educate and win that kind of, like you're, you're on the front lines, how do we best win that ideological battle for, you know, what I see as good versus evil? Um, and I think a lot of people might see it that way, but in general, just allowing parents to care for their children. <laughs> And, and taking this stuff out of schools? Well, for one thing, we need to recognize that the autogynophilic males that are in, in these positions of power and influence need to be called out for what they are. I mean, if you look at, you know, a man in a dress that is pushing for this in some, in some high up political position, um, or or high up education a, a position in education then you can you can best believe that there is some sort of perverted deviance in his in his background mm -hmm. because normal men just do not go around dressing up in women's clothes saying that they're a woman mm -hmm. that's not that's not something that you know your your average everyday man wants to do um and I think that I think that making people more aware of of the fetish and kink aspect of all of this needs to needs to happen and people need to understand that furthermore um i think that more parents even parents who know need to understand that social transitioning is not harmless it's not just some um some pronouns and using a different name it's not just dressing up in the clothes of the opposite sex. It's far more than that. Um, you know, it is it is a psychological and spiritual takeover of a child. Um, it's it's kidnapping them from themselves. So there's it leads to so much worse. Um, it leads to so much. Um, harm in the in the long run and watchful waiting is not something that we can observe anymore when a child says that they think that they're born in the wrong body watchful waiting used to be the standard but we can't we can't observe watchful waiting especially if the rest of the world is not going to allow them to um, come into their own our children a long time ago, the, the child would just assist on their own. It would it would be just it wouldn't be anything. They would be allowed to just grow up, and a lot of the time, those children would just, would grow up to be gay. Um, but now, the children are being affirmed and advised to go down a, a path of medicalization, even in at very young ages. So, making people understand that when social transitioning starts then you can't, you can't just ignore it and think that it's going to go away. Taking over, taking over the education system or even homeschooling is also something that we all need to start, we all need to start considering as a top priority, unlike we had in the past. And if, if other people can't see that the world is changing in after all of that, then they're just not look. They're they're just not paying attention. But I don't really care about that. Um, I don't care how many people know. What I care about is stopping it. Mm -hmm. And if 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 people are going to bury their head in the sand, so be it. I can still operate without them. So when 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 this was happening, um, there was a point right where you decide to to move to push back. What was the interaction like? I guess with you, with your daughter and and I think a lot of parents are kind of told this you know you can have um you know uh, and and Chuck Todd did it with Vivek Ramaswamy on a podcast on on his show you can ever ha have a trans kid or a dead kid that's what they tell parents mm -hmm. how how did you know this is this is a good point for for parents that that are stuck in this situation with what you did with what you did 
how do you respond to your child? How do you handle the situation? How do you handle the resistance? And how do you guide them while also showing that you're supporting them? Right. Well, that's where I, that's where the coaching service that I provide comes in. It's called affirming reality. And in affirming reality, I teach parents how to pr- bring their children back out of this cult. And mm-hmm. what you're talking about, what you're what you're talking about is a false dichotomy. That falls under the category of what I like to use as parallel language messaging. So all of these things that we're told, all of the gaslighting, the false dichotomies, the word salads, and all of those things that we are that are used to confuse us or make or belittle us or make us seem cruel, all of those things, I teach parents how to address them. And I also teach them how to to listen to their children, reconnect with them, and make them the primary source of comfort and safety for their children so that they can then explain to their children what is really happening. Because one of the things that that this cult does is they do like every cult does, right? They try to um, they try to um, disassociate the children from their parents, and and they teach the children that their parents aren't safe. And so, with my program, you learn how to um, you learn how to recapture your child by letting them know that you are the safest person, you are the strongest person, you are their most trusted protector and that you're not going to do anything to hurt them other people will though um so when someone says to me you know how do i how do i um get my child out of this without with you know without uh any any kind of blowback like that like the the false dichotomy i tell them you're going to have to you're going to have to make some real changes and some real sacrifices in your parenting technique in order to um, reconnect with your children. Right. Okay. Um, in terms of, um, like a child, like child, sh- I guess shows, right? Like TV shows that that are normalizing this. I just saw a clip from, um, a Netflix show. I think it was, and then a Transformers show. Where where the, where these characters are are going by they them or non binary, and I'm just mm-hmm. kind of thinking to myself like this. I don't want to think it is, but I have to think that this is a little bit more nefarious than than what it seems. Um, I don't know if you share the same thoughts, but it just seems like everything in the last five years has just boom. Like let's let's do this. Um, it, it's people did not see it coming that I that I've spoken to. Um, and it's just, it's weird. Like when I see it, it's weird. It's in the Proud Family, which used to be a really family friendly show. And now it's just like, he's dating you because you're white. And like, it's just making everything about race when it shouldn't be. Right. Um, it's taking us backwards. Um, We're in, progressing in, backwards, yes. In many respects. Yes. Um, so obviously kids want to watch shows. They want to be, um, you know, in in touch with whatever what all their other friends are doing. How do you, how do you as a parent navigate that? Well, for me, I made my daughter watch stuff from the eighties. Like really I did. Mm -hmm. I made her watch stuff from the eighties and the nineties. And we watch a lot of TV from other countries as well. Countries that aren't experiencing this. Um, Netflix is one of those, one of those um, places where you can get, you can get access to, to um, television programs from all over the world. And so we watch, we watch, I I am very, very careful about what we watch on TV. Um, You know, get rid of that Disney subscription, get rid of that Nickelodeon subscription. Um, There, I mean, and and at some point, at, at some point after, you know, after a while, your child will start to see it too and point it out even if you've educated them. And if they if they understand what's happening, because you can't you can't um, you can't just protect them forever. You you have to inoculate them from from this hyper reality. You have to inoculate them from the parallel language messaging. 
And in order to do that, they have to actually see it sometimes. So letting them letting them see TV shows from the 80s and TV shows from now, they they too can see it. It's not just it's not just the adults. The children see it too, and they're like, "What?" Mm -hmm. You know, they, they do. Um, and and m there are lots of children who are starting to um, who are starting to be more vocal about this, even as young as ten years old. Um, in Maine, there was a boy who was I think he was ten years old who went and spoke at his at his school board because. He didn't he didn't like that the librarian was pushing a book on him about uh, LGBTQ um, content. He didn't like that. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. You, I mean, there is nothing wrong with people having preferences and those preferences not having anything to do with, you know, with any kind of sexual orientation. Um, you know, they're just kids for one thing. So, you know, I think parents need to really explain to their children that life was not always like this. We weren't, we, we weren't um, looking for victimhood in our lives, in our everyday lives and show them what it, what it was like as opposed to what it's like now. Yeah. I, that, that's so true um because evidenced by the fact that this stuff didn't happen even like 10 years ago um but i was i was in a target i, I try not to go but i was in a target um and the the most books towards that kind of orientation of this social stuff was on like the top the bottom two lower shelves eye level with a kid because you know you know that everything in a store, if you if you take marketing and stuff like that in college, you yeah. know it's all put food, everything's put in a certain place. They buy a certain shelf, whatever. Right. And it's Target's now doing the um, the chest binders, and they're and they're and they're selling all these thing uh, things. You have um, male men modeling women's bathing suits now, but in, in Adidas. Um, <laughs> it's it's just it's just there, and, and it's like what is their what is their demographic? Like what woman is going to see, I can see this man's penis fits in this woman's bathing suit. So why don't I buy this for myself? <laughs> so I, I like, there's almost like, almost like, what is the angle here? <laughs> you know, I, I don't know what they're thinking. You know what it is? I, honestly, they have marketing people being, you know, coming out of universities that have um, women's studies majors, uh, cr you know, cross mingling with marketing. And they think that somehow this is the ultimate in femininity. You have to be a real man to be a woman. Like get out, yeah. like that is insanity. Um, but I think that one of, you know, one of our problems and this is, is this is, you know, it's, it's hard to hear, but it's women. Um, you know, women do need to stop allowing this and they need to speak up and stop being afraid. Um, and and we, we need to check the women who are in, you know, who are OK with this. But I also I mean, and having said that, I also think that the men need to be checking these men in dresses because those are, you know, those are the people who are um, going into women's bathrooms and, and changing rooms and, and that sort of thing. Um, in women's prisons, um, our 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 society has decided that there's no such thing as shame. There's no such thing as decency. There's no such thing as morality. And um, you know, even as an atheist, I recognize that something is very wrong with with the lack of religion in our society. You know what I mean? because people don't believe in anything and they don't care about anything. And they've decided that there's some sort of, some sort of past to be amoral um, and to be immoral. And I, I think that that is a mistake. Um, a, lot of, a lot of people end up in this trans cult because they don't have anything to believe in. And the, and the detransitioners they end up becoming, um, you know, becoming some, you know, getting involved in some sort of religion 
afterwards because they need the community. Um, they need to have some sort of church family to identify with because that's what drew them to the cult, to the trans cult to begin with was the need for community. Yep. I think all of this, I think all of this would would go away tomorrow if everybody just said, no, no, we're not, dude, you are, you're, you're a man, <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> and just stop with the be kind, you know, um, if you follow me on Twitter, you know that I am not kind. Um, if you follow me on Twitter, you know that I'm going to tell it like it is because the truth is not kind um, every time. And really, if we're being 100% honest, the kindest thing of all is to be honest about a situation so that whomever is engaging in this fetish kink or if they're experiencing uh, quote unquote gender dysphoria or whatever, they can get some real treatment. They can get some real help and stop going to quacks who are trying to turn them into a science experiment. Uh, I think that's the the perfect, uh, I think that's a perfect uh, way to close the conversation. What you were saying before got me thinking of that Jake, Jake from State Farm. Uh, the yeah. Old it's like, uh, uh, he's, he's a guy. guy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's a guy, um, so. <laughs> Yeah. Where can where can people uh, follow you um, on so on socials and um, and and get your kind of um, coaching if they, if they need it? So you can follow me on Twitter and most of most of the social media is at Gabs Clark Five, and um, for my a coaching service that I provide for parents, it's not counseling; it is coaching. Um, I don't I don't even talk with children. I help people parent their children into the systems. And you can um, see more about that at affirmingreality.com. Okay, awesome. Well, Gabs, thank you so much for your time. I really enjoyed the conversation and uh, hope to speak to you again soon. Thank you for having me.